Hello again, and welcome to another edition of Hashtag Now Smoking. I'm Gary Korb, Executive Editor for CigarAdvisor.com, and once again, I'm joined by Jared Gulick, who is my co-writer and colleague here at CigarAdvisor.com, and today we've got a really, really special cigar for our last show of 2019, and that is the Mi Querida Triqui Traca 552. It's a 5x52 Robusto. And it is from Dunbarton Tobacco and Company. If you're familiar with the Mikeri de line, they've got several uh, things going on now. I think they do the um, the brulee, yes, which, which we did earlier this year. And this Mikeri, this has a red band. Well, it's kind of like maroon and gold, which distinguishes it from the others. And um, Triki Traca, I guess that's how you would say it in Spanish. Or Triki Traca, most people are saying it, is uh, a Nicaraguan word for firecrackers. Firecrackers. Yeah. Okay. And this is supposed to be very bold. Yeah, I heard it was their bold. They, yeah. They're saying boldest release yet, right? They always say that. They always right? say. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe it is. So anyway, we're going to give it a shot, and uh, you know, we're pretty big fan of Steve's stuff. So um, yeah. let's see how it is. I, I, you know, this does have a really barnyardy, oh, grassy yeah. smell, which is nice. It smells like a real cigar. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, especially toward the foot. Get, really? You get down to the foot, and it's like it intensifies. I usually do this. Yeah, a little, um, little, little grassy, little, yeah, little earthy, uh, kind of woody. I don't know, but it's really, it's just really well packed. I mean, this is a pretty oh, solid yeah. cigar. No soft spots um, at all. It's um, really, really solid, and it's well rolled. The color is even. Uh, the cap is really, really nice. So you can see where the um, the line of the cap. Yeah. Um, it's that, that's probably, you know, like the best place to cut it. That's what I like to do. I like to cut it on that little seam right there, you know? You know what I like, too? How oily it is. Yes. It's so yes. oily. And it's got even a little bit of tooth in there. He uses beautiful yeah. uh, tobaccos, uh, Steve Saka. It's, it's just always, you know, he's very, very particular. And um, let's cut it. I'm going to do a V-cut. Oh, you're yeah. joining me for I a V-cut. <laughs> I, I did it the last time and the last cigar. Uh, and it was really good. So let's see how it is with this cigar. It draws a little firm on mine. Slightly. Maybe it'll open up a little bit. What are you getting uh, pre-light? Kind of earthy, woody? It's a little bit of nuts and almost like dark fruit. Um, mm. Not really raisin, but like, you know, just. Yeah, sometimes like you get little, that raisiny taste. Yeah, some, yeah. but it's not, it's not more salty and Oh, yeah. Woody, you know? A little bit of a mix of salt, wood, and yeah. maybe some hay. I don't know. Um, but anyway, let's light her up. Sure. Now, I didn't get a very deep cut with my cutter. I don't know. Maybe your cutter is, uh, is better. I don't know. But... Uh, We'll see how it goes. And uh, this is lighting really nice. Sure is. You ever notice that some cigars are more work to light than others? Yeah. This is it's not one of them. Well, <laughs> I'm making sure it lights really good. It's kind of creamy. What, are you getting any flavor yet? Anything particular? I agree with you. It's smooth. You know, when you, when you say boldest cigar we've done yet, I expected that initial, like, punch in the face. I know. You know? Usually and it's not there. Usually a lot there. of cigars are, you know, front-loaded, they it's call not it, there. and, um, you know, you get that bolt blast of pepper up front. But I think, I think if, if, if Steve was thinking about this in the way a firecracker might work... <laughs> the bang comes later. <laughs> it, yeah. It's it, a fuse. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> So I gotta say, you made me nervous this morning. Came out uh, of nowhere, you come grab me, you're like, we're gonna go do this review. I have no backstory on it. Never even really uh, looked into the brand yet, so I have well, no idea been what to expect. Well, a lot of talk about it. Though, yeah. Right? Um, yeah, I know. I did. I did catch you off guard a little bit, so I'm um, sorry about that. But um, I hope hope it'll be worth it. It's an adventure. Um, we're, we're gonna get into all the details on this cigar and you know the blend and all that um, in our next uh, set, but. Um, what are you getting in terms of uh, flavor now? That's kind of going a little bit. Uh, definitely a lot of wood. Okay, yeah, um, I agree. 
and um, I don't know. It's got this like um, like crisp vegetable kind of huh. thing going on with it. Okay. All right. Well, the smoke is flowing really nicely through the head. It's it's a it's still a little firm, but it's I'm not having a problem getting you know a good puff off of it. You know, it's 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 uh, I'd say you know it's burning pretty well. Yeah. Um, I would agree. Like I this is probably more firm than I than I usually like, but mm -hmm. I will say this. And it's something that we don't really talk about often, but mm -hmm. if it's slightly firm, it's okay. But it's way better than being slightly loose. Yeah, because then too it's, loose, just, it's just yeah, everything it's just, just, just falls apart. Place. On but it, I, I want to—I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick this up. But look at the look at the difference in your cut and my cut. Now we're both the different V cutters, right? Yeah. You've got this one, and I've got this one from Zycar. And see, so you're probably getting a better draw. A little, it's Overall. a little bit wider, and you know what's we, what's funny? You've seen some of the cuts that I do on this, and I tend to like mash it in there and cut. Looks like mm -hmm. Pac-Man when I'm done. You know? <laughs> okay. uh, I, I like a deep V cut, but I actually chose to go a little bit shallow this time, just to really? see. Really? So yeah. it'll go deeper than that? Oh yeah, it'll go way deeper. Wow. Than okay. And yeah. a lot of people love the V cut. Yeah. You know, my girlfriend just discovered the V cut recently. Yeah. Yeah, I know she's still, like into it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, really? When did you? Uh, she says, I just want to try it. You know, and she's always. Oh, very good, you know, so I got a review cutter. It really surprised me, you know, earlier in the year when we were talking to our uh, viewer base, they were talking, a lot of people were going toward the V-cut, which is probably a little bit uh, against what we thought would be, you know, commonplace. We mm -hmm. thought the straight cut would be by yeah. far the most popular, but people uh, are really into V-cut. My cut brother's now. into it, uh, some of his buddies uh, who smoke. Um, I'm starting to get some of that spice. Oh yeah, it's, it's it's starting to kick. It's creeping up on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see what happens when we really get into Act One. Okay, we're back, doing the Mi Querida Tricky Chaka from Don Barton Tobacco and Company, and this is really going nice. Yeah. Now we we it, we did get a little blast of uh, pepper, but now it smooths out again. Yeah, I I noticed that too. It's got like these. There's definitely complexity there. Mm-hmm. And that's in that pepper. Like you were saying, right. you know, now, it's right just now, pepper on off, you know? <laughs> I'm not getting much pepper. I'm getting, it's very smooth, it's very yeah. creamy. It's kind of woody. Getting a lot of, like, a nice uh, woody note to it. Yeah, there's a, a, a sweet finish. Taste on the tip of my, tip of my yeah. tongue. And, um, but I, I have to say, so far, other than that, you know, rogue uh, blast mm -hmm. of pepper, <laughs> not feeling like it's the... The strongest one they released. Well, we got a long way to go. That's but anyway, true. Let's talk about this cigar. Um, this is, uh, as we said, it's from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Steve Saka is the, uh, it's his company. And this is part of the Miquerita line. It was uh, debuted in Las Vegas uh, earlier this year in, uh, at the uh, IPCPR show. Or what is it called now? The PCA? PCA, yeah. yeah. And um, it's, it's pronounced Miquerida Triki Truca. And uh, as we mentioned, it's allegedly the boldest cigar released to date, according to Mr. Saka. And there's a quote here in the press release. It says, at its core, it remains our quintessential Miquerida blend with its earthy, sweet, broadleaf notes. Okay. Sure. I'm getting that. But with the incorporation of a couple of refinements, the Kappa has been switched from the traditional Connecticut broadleaf mediums to the rearward number one dark Corona leaves. So it's a higher priming right. uh, leaf, and plus a unique high octane ligero grown in the Dominican Republic. Hmm, that's hmm. interesting, because it usually uses mostly Nicaraguan. And uh, it's also been introduced into the Liga, which means the blend. Liga is the blend. Right. The resulting cigar retains its inherent sweet loam <laughs> and chocolate characteristics, yet delivers a significantly heavier, heavier sorry, smoking experience. So I think what we're getting primarily mm -hmm. off those higher primings, for some it might translate to power, but I think for those who have smoked a lot of cigars, it might translate to sweetness. Because yeah, those, it's a little sweet on the, on, on the finish. I can get it. I'm getting it. Yeah. Um, That's probably from the, uh, well, the higher priming leaves tend to have more. Sugar. Um, well, yeah. yeah. So it, that's true. Um, but it also the very lower priming leaves have sugar, too. Yeah. You know. But um, anyway, it says here that the Tricky Chiraca is Nicaraguan slang for oversized firecrackers 
that are connected by fuses on a long serial string. You've seen those, you know, maybe in the movies. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. They're running around the street and the whole thing's going off. Um, it says here that these explosive ropes are then laid down in the center of a street and sometimes stretch for blocks. Uh, they ignite them from one end and they explode in a cascading line. It goes like right down the street. <laughs> and they're often lit in celebration of important religious or national holidays. And he felt that this cultural icon was the ideal moniker for the explosive nature of the cigar. Well, we had one explosion. One, yeah. You know, but w w do we exaggerate? It wasn't really an explosion. No, I mean. <laughs> but it was a nice there burst. Was, there was a, a burst is a good word. I would have said a shot of pepper. Lasted about two, three minutes. And yeah, then, like you said, smoothed out real nice. Mm -hmm. Got creamy again. Yeah, it is. It's really creamy now, and uh, I don't know what to expect. But this is the 552, and these have all been, uh, all the cigars in the line, actually there are only two, uh, have been um, named for their sizes. So this is the 552. It's a 5 inch by 52 ring. And then we have the 648, which is a 6 by 48 Toro. And um, the cigars will feature a red band, which we've seen here. And um, they are... Um, List price at about, um, average about $11. That's, that's list. So anyway, I'll tell you one thing. He makes a good cigar. He does. He makes a great <laughs> yeah. cigar. I mean, this is just solidly and, built. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Look at that ash. Oh, wow. You really that got is, it going good. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually going to uh, knock it off so it doesn't end up on me. Yeah, knock it <laughs> off, it, will you? It, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's just beautiful. And, you know, it's got that perfect coin stack look to it. That's yeah. exactly what you want to see. It's the hallmark. Yeah. And we're going to see if it comes out to a yeah. cone here. In but a I, I really like this wrapper. And um, perfect. It's, 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 uh, it is nice and oily, and, and it's just uh, the color, everything about it. It's just really good. I'm, I'm still getting mostly a, kind of a, a woody note, and there's a little bit of pepper now sneaking back in. How about you? I'm not getting much pepper yet. Um, but it's still, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but I agree with you. Very woody. Still a lot of sweetness on the finish. Um, mm -hmm. But it's kind of like, in the back of my throat, it's mm -hmm. kind of tangy. Yeah. It's a little tangy. A little bit. So, um, right here. you know, not an overly complex cigar um, as far as different flavors. Mm -hmm. And it's gone through, you know, two major changes so far, but... Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's not great, because it is. Right. I can smoke these all day. It's good. It's bold. And uh, I like the fact, you know, I'm not a big fan of really strong cigars, especially if they're spicy. But if they're smooth and creamy, I can deal with that. You know, yeah. Because it makes it more enjoyable for me. Pepper just came back for me. So yeah, I must, have, I must have gotten bit. where you just got mm -hmm. to. Almost some citrus through the nose, too. Yeah, I just did a retro hail. Now you said your first retro hail was was pretty wild, right? It was. Yeah, because the first. <laughs> well, I did my first retro hail when we had that that spike of oh. pepper, and it was just like, whew. Okay. Had to wipe yeah, my I'm, brow. Actually, I'm. I'm. It, it's been fine for me. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, really really nice. So let's see what happens when we move into Act Two. All right, we're back with the Mikerida Tricky Chaka. Jared Corp here with Jared Gulick from CigarAdvisor.com. And I was just noticing, Jared, that when you puff on this cigar, and you, with the light hitting it, I'm getting blue smoke here and the white smoke here. And didn't you do something about this? Didn't you write something yes. about this? Yes, yes. So yeah, I mean, basically what's happening is that when the smoke particle gets attached to the water molecules in your mouth, mm -hmm. the wavelength that passes through the light changes. Oh, we actually okay. had uh, a professor from from uh, a local college come out and he explained that. Uh, and it's just a really cool phenomenon. It's just it's something that I picked up on and mm -hmm. we, we decided to do a video of it because I think it's just kind of cool. You know, yeah. it's just an interest. It's a conversation it is, it is, piece. It is. Sitting in a lounge, you talk about it. You, <laughs> you know? notice cer certain <laughs> things sometimes. But uh, I'm getting that great ash. Yeah. And you too. We're about just about, about in sync. My burn's a little bit off, but uh, it could yeah. be it could be the cut that I did. Um, like I said, you had a much broader cut than I did um, right. on my cigar, but uh, this, it's, I, I'm still getting a mostly woody, earthy character. Very Nicaraguan, even though I know he's got some Dominican in it. Yeah. Uh, that's probably keeping it nicely balanced, I would say. But um, I've even picked up like, some grassy notes. Yeah. Kind of like this grassy, like sweet grass, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a real, like, um, 
I like to call this a real cigar smoker cigar. You know, it's yeah. like it's a good hearty smoke. Quintessential. Yeah, it's it's just really nice. And I did, I just want to mention too that he only made two sizes, which I mentioned earlier, but it's also made in very limited quantities because the tobaccos that he's using, he's only got so much tobacco. Right. So you know, and I believe that um, the price of this cigar at famous-smoke.com will be around maybe under ten dollars or so at this time. Under ten dollars is a good yeah, deal for it's, this. It's a really it's, good deal. It's a really nice smoke and we've been taking our time with it and I, I'm really enjoying it a lot. I could smoke it every day. I could smoke it every day. Yeah, well you, li you like uh, bolder cigars generally. Yeah. I do, I think. And I don't find this, I know we keep going back to it, but I don't find this particularly bold. Like, I don't know, maybe, you know, 45 minutes from now I'm going to be sitting down and I'm going to really feel it and be a little swimmy, yeah. but like, like the this, last time we did a cigar. <laughs> like by that. no means is this, you know, for a beginner, but yeah. I, I think someone with uh, even a little bit of experience mm -hmm. would probably find a lot of enjoyment out of well, this. Well, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, I don't know if I would recommend it to, to a, a new cigar smoker. No, it's not new. It's a little too much. Yeah. But for someone who wants to, to get into something that is uh, very consistent and has a nice, bold Nicaraguan flavor, uh, or just bold tobacco flavor, you know, because yeah. he is using several different tobaccos in here. And, you know, what's, what I like about Steve is he really, you know, we were talking about science before, you know, yeah. the smoke and everything. And he's, he is technically a scientist in terms of how he looks at the tobaccos, how he sure. chooses his tobaccos. And he's very, very choosy. And I don't think he makes anything unless he's completely satisfied. With, uh, with what's in there and way it tastes. And no. I guess most blenders do, but I mean, he's really particular. I agree, he's an absolute perfectionist. Mm -hmm. You know, we were joking before that like anytime he's writing a Facebook post, it's, mm -hmm. it's 10 pages long. <laughs> but the thing is, it's not lacking content. He goes deep oh, yeah. in on, yeah. uh, on everything he does. He's, he's, he's an all in kind of guy. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I think that's why so many people have latched on to him from his history at Drew Estate, from everything he's done. Mm -hmm. He's, he's kind of got that, that alchemist golden touch, like it just turns yeah. to gold, you know? Yeah, and I would, I would say, speaking of Drew Estate, if you like like a T52, Liga T52, Liga Pravada, you're gonna like this cigar. Yeah. And I think, you know what, I would almost say, you know, it's, I don't know if I'm, this is a stretch, but I, I would say that the Liga Pravada that he did was almost like the base model for everything he's done. Um, you know, since then. And if we're honest, it's actually been the base model for a lot of cigars that have come out <laughs> since. It yeah. really set the bar high. Yeah. You know? Now, I noticed you're drinking um, cranberry apple juice today. I am. And, and uh, I think you mentioned that the other day we were in the office. You like this cranberry thing. Uh, I know cranberry juice is very tart. Very tart. Um, I don't know, um, I don't know about having something tart with a cigar, even though I do like vodka and tonic with a cigar, because it's just a drink I like. Um, but what, what's with the uh, cranberry juice? So what I like about it is that, <clears throat> first of all, we were talking off camera earlier about straight cranberry juice is a little bit too tart. It's really It's tart. very I, dry. I buy it and it's, whoo. It's like wine almost, right? Like it's just dry. It's, it's got that dry, dryness 100 to it. 100% pure mm. cranberry juice, not from concentrate. It's, yeah. it's expensive, but it is like really tart. I yeah. can't even drink it like straight. It's like sometimes. it makes you pucker almost like, yeah. it's almost sour. I mix it know? with pomegranate juice. Uh, but <laughs> what I like about cranberry, and what's nice is it's diluted with this half apple, half cranberry. Mm -hmm. And as you know, as everybody knows, apple is a really great palate cleanser, you know? Yeah, that's people, true. People eat apples after mm -hmm. smoking a cigar to clean, yep. cleanse their palate. So it has this dual effect where uh, when I'm smoking a cigar, it cleans my palate between puffs, uh, you know, whenever I take a sip, but also that cranberry, it's still very much there and it has that drying effect. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of makes you salivate a little bit. And I notice Ooh. that when I salivate more, I taste more. Okay. So it, you know, it brings out some of the notes. Um, and again, you know, if, if you're, if you're newer at smoking, I wouldn't pair something with cranberry juice because you're probably going to get lost mm. in the sauce, yeah. for lack of a better term. It's gonna yeah. overpower some of the stuff. Uh, but it's interesting, that might be why I'm getting some of the notes I'm getting off yeah. of Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely know? getting more pepper now. And I did like a small retro hail, I guess you can call it. And it's, whoo, it's, uh, it's tingling up there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, to me, it's, it's, been, it's been a very, very 
steady as she goes cigar from start to finish. Uh, we've had a couple, like you said, a couple pockets mm -hmm. of pepper here mm -hmm. and there, uh, but I, we've talked about complexity and we've talked about, I, I mentioned this in a podcast that I was on earlier, but I talked to Jose Blanco once mm -hmm. and Jose Blanco had said that he thinks that every cigar should take you on this roller coaster ride. It should mm -hmm. have all these different parts and it should be exciting. Should take you on a roller coaster ride, Jared. Right. It should, <laughs> yeah. And don't get me wrong. The yeah. man's a genius. He's a oh, legend of the Jose. industry. He's but I have, to, I have to disagree with him a little bit in the sense that it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. if those one or two notes that you're getting off the cigar are great. Right. It can be a one note song if that one mm -hmm. note is the golden note. Oh, you know? I'm totally down with that. And totally this is one of those that. types of cigars where it's, it's pretty much... I don't want to say static, but there's not many changes, but there, it's pleasant all the way through. Yeah, it really is. Like I said, I normally wouldn't smoke it. Like if I saw this press release and said, oh, it's a bowl of cigar, you know, I might even be a little turned off to it. Sure. But it's, it is bold, but yeah. it's not going to knock your socks off. Right. And um, as we are approaching Act 3, I think we should see what happens there. Yeah. Three. All right, we're in Act 3 of the Viquerida Tricky Traca. And I got to tell you, this has really been terrific, Jared. Oh, yeah. I, I really like it. It's been consistent and, and another great ash. And uh, it's, it's really firm, which I like, too. And, you know, so none of them have really dropped off on their own. You know, it's yeah. a gravity defying ash, as I say sometimes. But um, I'm kind of like shaping it here. And, um, you know, usually I'll say, you know, who is it for? Who's the cigar for? But I think the better question might be, when is the cigar best enjoyed? That's a really good question. <laughs> That's a really good question. Because, I mean, look, we're, by the time this gets viewed, we're going to be almost toward the end of December, you know? Yeah. This would be a great holiday cigar. Oh, absolutely. Really nice after, you know, like, because a cigar like this is good after a big meal and mm -hmm. everybody's gathering around the For table sure. having turkey and having... Mm -hmm. All the fixings, everything, you know. Yeah. But you know what else? What? This might be a nice cigar to smoke on New Year's Eve. Yeah, definitely. It's a celebration cigar. Yeah, say, you absolutely. Know? But you know what? I think, and, and you said I could smoke this every day. It's sure. It's also like a good, you know, solid everyday yeah. smoke. And and for the price, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's around ten ten dollars. I think the list is ten seventy five, something like that. But um, you know what I'm getting in this last act here is uh, I'm getting some more sweetness. It's actually opened up a little bit, yeah. but, but but the base notes are still that kind of earth and a little I guess mineral kind of a, sure. a taste. And um, and I've just really been enjoying the hell out of this. How about you? Are you getting anything new yeah, or not? Not so much anything new. I I, I uh, meet you eye to eye on the sweetness. It's definitely picked up a little bit in the sweetness, but I wouldn't say I've gotten anything new out of it. It's mm -hmm. like I said, it's been that kind of steady, even keel. Um, but I did notice that I'm starting to feel a little bit. Oh yeah. So yeah, a little uh, nicotine buzz there. A little bit of a little, <laughs> little, little hot under the hat. <laughs> you know, yeah. So I guess it is a uh, Connecticut broadleaf. Yeah. On here. Yeah, and so you know, speaking of leaves, mm -hmm. now I'm sure Sokka is going to be all over the comments if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but what it seems to me that sometimes what they do is, you'll hear the term front-loaded and rear-loaded cigars. Mm -hmm. And I think this is probably more likely to be rear-loaded, but I can't, obviously we can't confirm that. I no. didn't, we didn't yeah. dissect one, you right, know? Right, right. Uh, but I think they may have put the leaves where the tips are facing toward the head of the cigar. That could be. And that yeah. gives you that rear-loaded profile. And mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, like, like I said, he'll be right. in the comments telling us yeah. I'm wrong. <laughs> but uh, it seems like it builds up and it could just be that it's built up over time that it's just a, a high octane cigar and that it just took a while to catch on, but it's feeling like it just kind of gradually gets you and it's, it's mm -hmm. almost that like sleeper, like, whew, starting to feel that now, <laughs> you know? But yeah. um, definitely a great smoke. Man. Right, right. And, and, and for those who don't like a cigar that's, you know, too sweet, this is definitely in the pocket because I like a kind of a sweeter cigar. Right. And I am getting a little sweetness now, but it's not really a sweet smoke. It's a, a, apparently the, the leaf that he chose, even though Connecticut Broadleaf tends to be sweet naturally, yeah. uh, it has more of a uh, bold uh, flavor to it. It's more robust and, sure. uh, and more earthy. And I just, I just think it's, um, you, know, you, can, you know, if I had to give it a grade, I guess I'd give it an A. 
you know. Yeah, and one other thing I'd, I want to point out too is that you know of all people, I think, because we've talked about this off mm -hmm. camera many times, is that Connecticut broadleaf, or actually even PA broadleaf, any type of broadleaf, yeah. is an acquired taste. Mm. And especially if it's not fermented correctly or yeah. long enough, it tends right. to be bitter and it, it mm -hmm. has a lot of stuff that that people don't really latch on to. And I can attest to the fermentation was done perfectly on this yeah. leaf because, oh, yeah. you know, it's not bitter. It's never been bitter. It's never had any of that. Like there's, maybe there's a hint of coffee here and there, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that's a, that's a large note, but just a really great job, you know, crafting the cigar, aging it, fermenting it. You can tell he put a lot of work into it. Oh, he did. And so is it humidor worthy? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> It definitely is, and um, I'm a little bit ahead of you. I know during the break, I guess I uh, yeah. got a little bit ahead. Well, but, look how far but, ahead of me you are. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it, it's uh, it's just really delicious. This Micarita Tricky Traca, and you can buy it at famous-smoke.com, and you can buy all of uh, Dumbarton Tobacco and Company cigars at famous-smoke.com, and uh, we're going to keep smoking this thing because yeah. we're really digging it. And can, can I have another one? Um, well, you'll have to ask Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I want to thank you for watching hashtag no smoking. Don't forget to follow CigarAdvisor.com on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram right? Instagram. <laughs> and of course, if you like this cigar, you just like the subject, uh, make sure you also like us on YouTube. That's right. And be sure to follow us on YouTube and subscribe. And also, be sure to click that little bell, right? Because you'll get notifications as to when our next phenomenal video is posted. That's so, right. <laughs> anyway, Jared, thanks for coming on, man. No I, I appreciate it. It was a last minute thing, but you did a great job. And thank you for watching. Hashtag no smoking. We'll see you next time and happy smokes.